Hello super user, so today we're going to be focusing on 14 different ways to navigate around a finale document. Now sorry about not posting a video yesterday, this video took a whole lot longer to research than expected. But one way to really cut down on research time is definitely Jason Lofredo's Conquering Finale YouTube channel, and he also has a website. Uh, I definitely use that a lot for research in this video, so definitely please do check it out and even subscribe to him. He makes amazing videos if you really want to know like the detailed nitty gritty, this is everything possible in Finale. And lastly, before we get started, this channel is almost at a thousand subscribers and that'll be really, really cool when we get there, but over 60% of you aren't yet subscribed. So if you could just go down there and press the little subscribe button, I will really appreciate that. So anyways, back to the ways to navigate. Well, we're not gonna be focusing on navigation like between documents such as that, or even between like the score and part like that. We're just gonna be focusing purely on navigating from within a document, like getting from over here to over here. And so that's actually the very first thing we can do is we can scroll around the document. Uh, this is especially useful if you have a trackpad. But if you don't, over here in the palette tool, there's actually a hand grabber tool where you can use to just click and drag around. That way you can maneuver around the document manually. Of course, the hand grabber tool is also found under tools and then hand grabber. But sometimes it's just not convenient to go over here to the main palette tool to grab the hand grabber tool or even to come up here to the tools menu and grab the hand grabber tool. So there's actually a keyboard shortcut for Mac, which is command and option, which will directly take you to the hand grabber tool. On Windows, all it is is simply right clicking. Now, another way you can move around the document is you have these scroll bars. Now, sometimes if you're on a Mac, at least they will disappear if you haven't used them. So you might have to drag a little bit, but then you can use the scroll bar to basically go anywhere you want, either horizontally, or there's another one over here where you can scroll around vertically. And along those lines, right beneath the scroll bar, there's actually this little shuttle over here. This allows you, depending on the button, to either move to the next page like that or move to a previous page, or you can actually go all the way to the end of your document with the last arrow or all the way to the beginning with this first arrow. If you're in scroll view, these arrows will actually just shift you back and forth between one measure. But that's not all we can do with the shuttle. If you know a specific page you'd like to move to, you can just go to this little number, double click it, and then type in like three for page three and hit enter, and it will take you to page three. Alternatively, if you're in scroll view and you type in a measure over here, like 24, it'll take you to measure 24. You can also move around by going up here to view and then go to measure, that's command shift G as well. And you can also type in a measure number such as 24 and it will take you to that measure number. In page view, the measure is going to be in the middle of your screen right here. However, I believe in scroll view, if you go to measure like 24, it will then show up in the far left hand corner. Now there's also a really useful but underused feature called bookmarks. So for instance, if I'm over here and I'm on like measure number 20 and I want to bookmark this specific measure, even maybe let's bookmark this specific view, I can either go up here to view and then bookmarks or just hit command B and add a bookmark. And we're going to call this a uh, flute measure 20. You can call it anything you want and you can even make it remember the zoom and the horizontal and vertical positions of the screen. And if you hit add, then I can go anywhere else I want, including I can even go to scroll view, come up here to view and then bookmarks and then go to flute measure 20 and it'll take me back to page view with that exact zoom and the exact positioning of the screen. And if you're in scroll view and have a staff set selected, it will even remember that staff set for you. Now there are a couple more things that we're gonna go over. Now these last few have to do all with the extended keyboard, specifically the home and page up and page down keys. If you're on a Mac laptop that does not have the extended keyboard, you can also use function and then your arrow keys to do these same results. Like function left would be home, function right would be end, function up would be page up, and function down is page down. So if we just press end, it'll actually take us to the right one screen and home will take us left one screen. And by one screen, I mean, it's literally the width of your screen. So as you can see here, we end right at the end of this measure. And if we go left, we start right at the very beginning of that measure. Similar thing with page up and page down, where page down will take you down one screen and page up will take you up one screen. But you can actually modify this. So if you add in the command key or control on Windows and press home, it'll actually take you straight to the beginning of your music. And if you do end, it'll take you straight to the end of your music. Notice that it's actually also the bottom where it lines up with the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And with home, it'll line up with the top left-hand corner of your screen. Similarly, page down will take you left one page and page up will take you right one page. If you're in scroll view, this will just be a page worth of measures. So as you can see, now we have nine measures. So if you do page down 
it'll take you up to measure 9, and that'll take you up to measure 17, up to 25, and page up will take you backwards. Now in page view, if you add in shift, it'll take you to home the top left hand corner and end the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So if I zoom in big again, shift plus home will take me to the top left hand corner and shift plus end will take me to the bottom right hand corner of that page. And then finally, if you press option plus any of these four keys, it'll do a tiny little nudge in that direction. So this is home, tiny little nudge this way, and then if you do end, it's a tiny little nudge to the right, page up, tiny little nudge up, and page down is a tiny little nudge down. And that is using Alt on Windows. So that's it for today. That is 14 ways to navigate around your Finale document in Finale. And if you like this video, I definitely would recommend Conquering Finale by Jason Lafredo, uh, specifically this first chapter, which is all about nailing navigation. He goes into a whole lot more detail, including a lot of the fine minutia, of the different navigation techniques we talked about, as well as many more navigation techniques. So definitely do check that out. If you found this video at all helpful, make sure to hit the like button so I know you want more content just like this. And each week I post new videos about how to use Finale to its fullest, so if you don't want to miss out on any of those, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified every time a new video comes out.